Hi, Assalamualaikum. We will continue our lecture on the fundamentals of rocket propulsion. In the previous video, we have already looked into the first four items, which is total impulse, specific impulse, propellant mass, as well as the effective exhaust velocity. So for this particular video, we will cover the final three, which is the mass ratio, propellant mass fraction, and impulse to weight ratio. Okay. The mass ratio is basically denoted by the symbol MR. Okay. It is defined as the final mass M subscript F, which means after the rocket operation has consumed all usable propellant, which is divided by the M0, which is the mass before the rocket operation. So the mass ratio is equal to the MF, the final mass, divided by the M0, which is the mass before the rocket operation. Note that the MF includes all those components that are not useful propellant and may include other devices. The next one is propellant mass fraction, which is denoted by the symbol zeta, which indicates the fraction of propellant mass, mp, okay, m subscript p, in an initial mass m naught. It can be applied to a vehicle, a stage of a vehicle, or to a rocket propulsion system. And it can be written as zeta equal to the propellant mass divided by the initial mass m naught. And the, prop the fraction of propellant mass equal to the uh, m0 minus mf divided by m0 which is equation 9 and finally it can be written as the expression of m0 equal to the mf plus mp when applied to a rocket propulsion system the mass ratio and the mass propellant fraction are different from those applied to a vehicle. Here, the initial mass, M0, consists of the inert propulsion mass, which is including the hardware necessary to burn and store the propellant and the effective propellant mass. So it would exclude masses of non-propulsive components such as the payload or guidance devices. Next is the impulse to weight ratio. What is it? Impulse to weight ratio. It is defined as the total impulse. So we have the I subscript T divided by the initial or propellant loaded vehicle weight which is the W0. A high value indicates an efficient design. Assuming constant thrust and negligible start and stop transient, expression equation 11 as well as equation 12 can be written. Okay, we have the element of the total impulse, we have the weight of the vehicle, we have the uh, mass of the final mass of the uh, propellant and the gravitational acceleration component. And equation 12 is we, where we have the elements of the specific impulse. In terms of the thrust to weight ratio, it can be expressed as the item F over W0. Okay, F is the thrust, W0 is the weight at initial. 
which is expresses the acceleration in multiples of Earth's surface acceleration of gravity that the engine is capable of giving its own loaded propulsion system mass. And F over W0, the thrust to weight ratio, is useful to compare different types of rocket systems. So when you want to compare different types of rocket systems, such as in our earlier video in this particular topic, you can see that the rocket system can be compared in terms of the thrust to weight ratio. The thrust itself is the force which produced by a rocket propulsion system acting upon a vehicle. And thrust and mass flow are constant and the gas exit velocity is assumed to be uniform. Again, I repeat, it's assumed to be uniform as well as axial. And it can be written as the expression 13. And this force represents the total propulsion force when the nozzle exit pressure equals to the ambient pressure. The pressure of the surrounding fluid or local atmosphere gives rise to the second contribution. Right? So that's, this is the second contribution that influences the thrust. The next figure that I will show you it's shown this schematically the external pressure acting uniformly on the outer surface of a rocket chamber and the gas pressures on the inside of a typical thermal rocket engine. Right, this is figure 2 1, which shows the uh, pressure balance on chamber and nozzle interior walls which is not uniform okay so you can see here the internal gas pressure indicated by length of arrows in highest in the chamber so i will just try to re uh, highlight the areas in the chamber okay here okay, which is uh, having a uh, larger arrows and a smaller arrow in the nozzle section Okay, the exit section okay and the external or atmospheric pressure p3 okay we have the p3 which is the atmospheric pressure okay p3 is basically here okay this is also p3 this is p3 this is p3 uh, in, which is uniform at the throat the pressure is pt right and the four subscripts shown inside the circle refer to quantities A, V, T, and P at specific location. The area, the velocity, the temperature, and the pressure. We will continue on the following video to look into the final stage of the fundamentals of rocket propulsion. That's all for now. If you have any comments or you have any questions, you can leave it in the YouTube link. Thank you and bye-bye for now.